Previously, I've done multiple explanations of different types of VFR terms and symbols. Now it's time for airports. So, airports. It's going to be a pretty short section. You can read about it here, but I'll be summarizing the key things. So, airports typically have four categories. You got your hard surface runways that are greater than 8,069 feet or multiple runways, which are less than 8,069 feet. So these are again hard surface runways, either greater or multiple, which are less than this number. You have hard surface runways, which are between 1,500 feet to 8,069 feet. So 1,500 and 8,069 are the kind of numbers you want to remember for these two different symbols. These are going to be the main symbols you see on sectional charts when you look at uh, airports. You also have uh, surfaces which are not hard surface so you can think of maybe like a runway that is in the grass or something like that typically not something you're gonna come across but this is another way that airports are predicted or depicted depicted with this little circle right here you also have seaplane bases which are represented by an anchor so these are the four different types of kind of main airports you might come across you also have military airports, and those are either a red or a blue circle, which surround another circle. You have foreign airports as well, but that'll just be a gray circle. You have military airports, and they are abbreviated with the following. So you have AAF, which is the Army Airfield, AFB, which is the Air Force Bases, MCAS, which is Marine Corps Air Station, NAS, which is the Naval Air Station, NAV, which is the Naval Air Facility, and NAAS, which is the Naval Auxiliary Air Station. I don't think you exactly have to memorize these, but I would totally recommend that there are four different main types of public use airports. That's pretty important. You have fuel available at certain runways, and they're going to be denoted with these ticks. So if we look back up here to the public use airports, you see these two symbols, this one right here and this one, it's basically the same thing. The only difference is that this one has little ticks on it and that uh, shows that there is fuel available at the airport. And then you have other airports without fuel and they'll look something like this. You have some more information uh, just about uh, airports and where they're going to be placed with regards to information as well. Airports where fixed wing VFR operations are completely prohibited and that'll be denoted with a no SVFR. So no VFR. Your control tower frequency, this one's pretty important. It's going to be CT-118.3. So when you're looking for a frequency, which they will ask you on the test, look for a CT-118.3 and then the C right here. This star is also really important. And the star indicates operation of part-time. So you're going to want to see tower frequency tabulations for the hours of operations. And this is specific to the airport that has this star. You have the following of tr common traffic advisory frequency. So that's CTAF. That's going to be this C right here. Another thing that's important is lighting. So if you have an L right here, you have lighting and operation from sunset to sunrise. So at night when the sun sets, up until the sun rises, you're going to have lighting. If you have a lighting with a star in front of it, that means lighting limitations do exist and you would have to see the chart supplement for more information about that. The number after that, so 72 here, it's going to be the length of the longest runway in hundreds of feet. And then you'll have some more information if you want to read about specifics down here. The last thing we're going to touch on is the term objectionable which is associated with an airport symbol and it may indicate possible hazards, increased traffic, or obstacles. So if you see the term objectionable with an airport symbol, you just want to be careful around there if you are a manned aircraft. 